Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex. And this month I'm really excited because two things that I love, Plex and retro video games, are coming together because Plex has added a new media format to the Plex media server after all of these years. So we've had movies, we've had TV shows, we've had music, and now you can add your retro game collection to the mix and boot those games up on your Plex server and play them remotely from your mobile devices and from TV boxes and computers. And you can play a lot of different systems as well. And I'm gonna show you how to get your games into Plex in this video and boot them up. It does require a little bit of work, but of course, if you are a Plex fan, you know that sometimes you gotta tweak things every once in a while to get them right. And we're going to jump into how to do that in just a second. Now, I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this new feature is all about. Now we're going to be demoing this today running on this Pepper Jobs Mini PC. I like to use this machine in these Plex demos because it's kind of what I would consider to be the minimum spec for a Plex server. It's running a Gemini Lake Intel processor, which of course has the quick sync hardware transcoding features built in. So it does a very nice job streaming out 1080p content for me and a few other people that I might want to share things with. And for a media server, it works great. And again, this is the minimum spec and I wanted to see how well the minimum spec would do uh, with this new retro gaming feature. Now the way this works is that it runs on the Plex server and then your Plex server will be streaming the game out over the local network or over the internet if you're remote. So everything happens inside the box and it's just streaming out video uh, like it would if you were doing a movie or some other kind of traditional content. Now there are a couple of requirements here up front and I know one of them is going to be unpopular amongst many of you, which is that this is a subscription feature even if you are already a Plex Pass holder. So the feature will not work without the subscription. You can though try it out for seven days for free to see if it's something you may wanna use. So if you did wanna play around with it, you can get going without having to pay. It costs $2.99 a month for Plex Pass holders and $4.99 per month if you're not a Plex Pass holder. Now what you get for that is access to the feature, but also about two dozen licensed Atari games that come from the Atari 2600, the Atari 7800, and their arcade library. And then you can put your own games in as well. And we're gonna focus on the how-to of your own games as we work our way through the video here. But just know that you have to be a subscriber to this particular feature for it to work, irrespective of whether or not you have a Plex Pass. And I've definitely let the team know that it might be good to have some more options for some of us Plex Pass holders in the future. And if there is a change, I'll let you know down in the video description. But right now, this is what is required. A uh, second thing to note here is that this does require a Windows or a Mac server. It does not work on Linux at the moment. Now there is a good amount of compatibility on the client side. You can boot it up inside of a web browser from anywhere you are in the world. And that of course will include Chromebooks and Macs and PCs and everything else. You can also run it on your iPhone, on your Android phone, on your iPad or an Android tablet. It also supports TV boxes and their support right now includes Android TV based devices and it supports the Apple TV as well. So you probably have something that can play the games but the server side is a little bit more limited. Now they are streaming everything through libraries that have been created by Parsec and if you haven't played around with Parsec before it's a pretty cool way to stream your local desktop remotely and it does very good with gaming and a lot of other functions as well. And what you need to do for this new Plex feature to work is sign up for a free Parsec account if you don't already have one. Now if you click on get started here it's going to download their software which you don't need for this because all of the libraries are built into Plex already. So what I would do is just go over here to log in and then click on the sign up link here to get started with a Parsec account. And once you have your username and password from Parsec, you're going to need to link that up with Plex. I'm gonna put links to all this stuff in the video description. So if you go over to the other services page on the Plex website, and again, I'll have a direct link to that, you'll now see Parsec down here along with Sonos, Tidal, and Last.fm. 
And all you have to do is just authorize the connection between Plex and Parsec using that uh, Parsec username and password. And once that is set up, you are pretty much ready to get going. Now, there are a bunch of steps involved in getting the games to actually work on the server, which we're going to step through now. I am doing this pretty much the day before this comes out to all of you. So some of these steps might change in the future, and if they do, I will update the video description or upload a new video if necessary. But right now, this is how you do it, so let's dig in. Now, the process of setting up a games library is identical to other libraries on Plex, and I'm going to assume in this video that you already know how to do that. If you don't, Go to my video about how to set up a Plex server where I step through the entire process of getting a Plex server running. And the process here is identical. You put a folder on your hard drive, you put some ROMs in it, and then you point the library at it. Uh, but let me show you a couple of things that are a little bit different here when you set up your games library. So I'm gonna go here and just uh, set one up. Now, if you are not subscribed to the games feature, it's not going to let you proceed any further. If you are subscribed, you then are given the option to download the Atari games. You don't have to download the Atari games, but you do need to have the subscription, as I mentioned. So here is what the library looks like with all of those Atari games included. Now you'll notice though, if I go back to the library here, that we've got Sonic the Hedgehog kind of in the mix here. And that's a ROM file that I copied over to my library manually. And if I try to boot up Sonic the Hedgehog right now, I get an error saying that it's missing the core. And what we need to do now is get the core into Plex so that we can run this game that's not part of the Atari library. So we're gonna need to run over to the Lib Retro repository find a core, get it installed, and then we can get things to boot up, and this is where the fun begins. Uh, so what I'm gonna do here is go through the cores and find one that is good for running these Genesis games, and I'm hearing that the Genesis Plus GX core is the one that I want to look for here. So I'm going to click on that and have that download. Now this repository is linked down below in the video description. They do update these cores quite frequently, so you'll want to jump back and see if there's an update for cores that you're using quite a bit on your Plex installation. Also note that we're not going to get into all the higher end systems today like the Sega CD and the TurboGrafx-16 CD. We're just going to do the basics here, a simple cartridge system so you can get yourself up and running. And maybe a little bit later, we'll come back and do more advanced systems in an upcoming video. Now, if you are on the Mac, what you're going to do is browse through the Apple section here. And if you go over to OS 10 and then select uh, x86-64 and go to latest, you'll have a bunch of cores that are compatible on the Mac side. At the moment, there aren't many for the ARM-based uh, devices just yet. So again, I think on the Mac, you're going to want to stick to Intel. All right, so we've got a file downloaded now, and this is a zip archive that we need to extract. So I'm going to right click on here and say extract all. This is our usual Windows zip extraction, and you could use whatever tool you want to do your extraction. And when we're done with that, we're going to have a DLL file here in a folder. Now, the next step here is to go to where our Plex server stores its metadata. Now, remember, I'm on Windows right now. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just paste in the default location uh, for the Windows metadata here. And I got that off of the Plex support page, which I will point you to in the video description as well. And when we jump into this directory, you're going to see... Uh, a folder here called Game Cores. Now, I had the Atari stuff installed already, so my Game Cores folder was created. If you don't see a Game Cores folder, you need to make one, and it needs to be spelled exactly like this. So here's the easy part. We just have to copy that DLL file uh, from where we extracted it into the Game Cores folder. I'm just going to move it in there. And as you can see, we now have that file inside of that folder. I'll give you a closer look at it here. So right now we've got inside the uh, Game Cores folder the Genesis Plus Lib Retro DLL file. Now we also though have to go and edit something else. So let me go back here uh, to the directory that sits above this one. And you want to look for plug-in support. And in plugin support, you should see an XML file called RetroCores. And you have to edit this file 
with Notepad or some similar text editor. You don't want to use a rich text editor or Microsoft Word or something like that. Now this file should be created for you when you uh, add the game library to your Plex server. If it doesn't, I will leave some text in the video description that you can paste in to create your own file and it should be called RetroCores dot XML. So now we need to add a mapping to point Plex at the core that we want to use. And let me zoom out here for a second because I want to get uh, what core it was looking for here on our error screen, which was Sega Genesis. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. I could type it, of course, but I want to get it exact, right? So we're going to uh, just grab that. And what I'm going to do here in the XML file, let me zoom in for you a little bit, is I'm going to build out a manual mapping. So I'm going to do a, a left bracket and type in mapping. And then I'm going to say platform. And I'll put text uh, in the video description that will give you kind of a template for this. And I'll just paste in Sega Genesis from the error message we got earlier. And then for the core, I'm going to type core equals quotation marks. And I'm going to go over to the game core that we copied over and just get its file name. Uh, so what you do here is I would just like click on it like you were going to rename it. And rather than uh, rename it, just copy and paste the name of it. So I'm going to hit Control C here and that will get us the text of that file name. I'm going to paste it in right there. So you can see we basically uh, re replicated the entire file name minus the DLL. And I'm going to hit enter again and then I'm going to put a slash and a closing bracket there and then I'm going to save the retro cores file here. And one of the things that I would suggest you do is restart your Plex server just for good measure. And let's see if our work here paid off. All right, so let's boot this up now and see what happens. We'll click on Sonic the Hedgehog now that we have the core all installed here. And as you can see, the game is now streaming. Now, of course, we're doing this locally because we are running it on a web browser on the same machine that is running the code. But it really is actually streaming this to the browser. It's not running in its own window here. Uh, and as you can see, everything seems to be coming up just fine. Now, there's some cool features about how this thing works. So right now, we've got the a track screen on here. And if I grab my mouse and go here and just close out the game, if I go back to it again, it will pull up a dialogue similar to what you would see when watching a movie or a TV show. And you can actually resume it with a save state. And what will happen here when it comes back is it's going to drop us right back in where we left off. And that's a multi-platform thing. So if I quit the game here and go over to my iPhone now, we should be able to pick up right where we left off. Let's take a look. So I've got Plex here running on my iPhone. It's the same Plex app you use to watch media. But inside of that games library, you can see that I've got two or three actually save states of different games that I'm in the middle of playing. So if I want to resume Sonic the Hedgehog here, I will just go ahead and hit that. And then if I go and play it, what's going to happen here, if I click Resume, is it's going to drop me in right where we left off before. It's pretty much the same thing. Now if I uh, quit now, let me just go ahead here and uh, close out. And then come back to the computer here and resume. It should drop us off pretty much right where we left off and we can continue on from there. I found sometimes there's a little bit of a delay between the time that you stop and when that save state gets created, but you can very easily pick it up from where you left off for the most part. I think you're probably best using this feature with RPGs and other things that don't require as uh, much uh, immediate action as perhaps an action game like this might require. Now, if you want to reset the save state, all you gotta do is just mark it as played and then when you go to run it again, it will start from the beginning. Now, one thing that does appear to work are save games, although it's going to vary based on the core that you choose. Uh, right now, I've got the uh, Zelda Link to the Past game here running in the SNES core. And if I just blow out of here real quick, it'll do a save state. And of course, I can go back and play the game from the state in which I just saved it. But if I happen to go ahead and start from the beginning, you'll see that the save game that I created uh, will be available for us here. So let's boot the game up here real quick and uh, take a look and see if that save file is there. I found that some cores are better than others for this. So for example, the SNES 9X core, which is what I have running right now, uh, seems to work fine. The save game that I created is there. 
I wasn't having as much luck with the Sega Genesis core we were just playing with. So you're going to want to kind of experiment a little bit and see what works. The save files, though, should be cross-compatible uh, between different devices running with these lib retro cores. Let me show you where those game saves are located. So the save games and snapshots will be in your Plex data directory, which we went to earlier to set up everything. And once you start playing games, you'll get a new folder here called Game Saves, and that's where this stuff is going to go. Unfortunately, it's hard to figure out what goes with what insofar as what files are being created for what game. Uh, but as you can see here, we do have save game data, the RAM.dat, along with uh, snapshot data here as well for jumping back and forth. And I think over time they'll refine this. This is, again, early days, but this is where the game saves are located, and you should look to back that up from time to time just to be safe. Now, it does support game controllers on all of the client platforms, and you can connect up to four of them. Uh, right now, I thought it might be fun to hook it up to my Apple TV here and try it out with my Xbox controller. So we'll go ahead here and summon up Sonic the Hedgehog. I have a save state, but I think I'll just start from the beginning here. And when we click Start on the controller, we should be able to play the game here, uh, just like we would perhaps on a Sega Genesis. The latency, though, doesn't feel that bad, and that's something that Parsec uh, really brings to the table here. So you'll have, I think, a good gameplay experience. The latency is going to vary, though, based on the platform you're playing on, how the controller is connected, whether or not you're on the Internet. There's a lot of factors that come into play here, but my biggest hope at the moment is that future releases of this feature will allow you to bump up the bitrate on the video to improve the quality. But so far, so good here, uh, even on the Apple TV, which can be a bit restrictive. Now, I pulled up my system resources here just to see what kind of activity is going on with the server. And right now, it looks like on the maximum, and we've got a lot of motion on screen, we're doing about uh, 10 or 11 megabits per second here, and that's with the game running in a track mode here where there's a lot of things moving on screen. And I forgot that this is running with uh, the Parsec uh, library, so it's going to be rendering, I think, outside of the usual transcoder here. So if you are remote, it will vary the bit rate based on what your network conditions are looking like. Uh, from a CPU perspective, you can kind of see what we're getting here on the CPU overall. We're running about 30% utilization right now with just that single stream going to the Apple TV. And again, we're on a quad-core Gemini Lake machine here, the lowest of the low end, essentially. So if you have a more powerful Plex server, you should be doing a little bit better than that. All right, before we wrap up, I got a few odds and ends to talk about. The first is related to sharing media. So if you have a friend with a full Plex account, you can share your game library with them and they can play the games just like they can watch your movies and TV shows. But managed users, people that are on your account, like my wife and kids, cannot share the game library. Only the main user can, which is, of course, me on my account. So just be aware of that. Uh, another thing is that this is very early stages here. So when you first start playing with this around the time that this video is getting posted, you will encounter bugs. Things will not be working correctly occasionally. You might have to reboot your Plex server every once in a while. It is far from perfect, especially for the bring your own ROMs feature here. Uh, but it is off to a great start, and it's really cool to be able to now put my retro games into my Plex server, just like all my other personal media. And I'm looking forward to playing with this feature a lot more in the future. It should work with most of the cores that are available in that uh, lib retro repository that I linked to in the video description. Uh, but some stuff may not get indexed properly. You might have some issues here and there. Performance will, of course, vary based on what the core requires for system resources as well. So play around with it. See what works, what doesn't. Definitely head over to the Plex forums and let them know uh, what they, they should be looking at and fixing. And I think the more of us that are eager to keep helping them develop this feature, the more likely it will be uh, something they'll be putting some attention towards in the future as well. So I'm really excited to see this, and hopefully you are as well. That is going to do it for now. I want to thank Plex for adding this feature and, of course, for supporting the channel for so many years now. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Jim Peter, Tom Albrecht, Frank Lewandowski, Mark Bollinger, 
and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.